Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for November 11th of 2022. Well, happy 11-11, everybody. All right. So um, if this is your first time here, please do uh, drop questions here on the questions tab. And otherwise, the chat side is a great place to connect with people. And let's see, make sure that all my devices are off and the sound is off. All right. So um, let's see, I guess, uh, make a couple of announcements this morning. Um, just put out a quick video yesterday on the meditation for the new, um, well, the newly released pair of rings, which we call the Divine Earth Alchemy Rings. Um, so there's a quick meditation there on that product page and on our social media, but we'll also be doing that meditation here today as well, because it's, it's a pretty profound meditation. It's, it's an expansion of the Trinity breath that we use to move into the heart space. Uh, let's see another announcement. Um, gosh, let's see. It's that season again, the the whole Black Friday, Cyber Monday and weeks leading up to it as if you guys haven't already seen all that stuff going on for months everywhere. Um, so what we have is we have a, um, a few different specials that we're that we're offering here over the next uh, week or so. Uh, today is the last day of the silver special, which is a silver infinity, um, a silver chalice clasp and a silver finger ring so and it comes in a nice little gift box um and so we'll have uh specials coming out here every week that'll all be in their own gift boxes as well as our you know our annual black friday cyber monday stuff so anyway um and you don't have to wait till then to pick yourself up something special i know like um these particular rings here, the Earth Alchemy rings, they're already listed as on sale, so there's not any other discounts on them. I think you saved like 47 bucks or something buying these in a pair. Try to make them as affordable as possible because um, it's a pretty profound energy. But anyway, um, let's see. Another business style announcement we have. Um, gosh. We just did that workshop out in Wisconsin, a full day workshop, which was pretty profound. Um, and I just getting that video um, uploaded and everything onto the cloud for the participants. And I'm not sure what we're doing with that video yet. Um, you know, participants had to pay 150 bucks to come to that class. And so, you know, we'll probably sell it for, you know, a, a smaller amount obviously but would still like to be able to get it out there um gosh yeah that's that's always been a, a tough one of the information that we share versus what we try to um offer as a product because to me it's it's all about everything and everybody but we still want to be able to cover our time and energy I actually spent all day yesterday <laughs> working on that video instead of doing everything else um let's see so uh the other business related is um let's see i usually do my healing sessions there have been 15 minute sessions pretty profound it's it's always been that that soul alchemy stuff the clearing i tell you um this weekend was really amazing in wisconsin because i did a um, did personal sessions all day on Sunday and everything changed. Um, you know, cause usually I'd go in and have a little script for just a first few minutes that we do for the first like three or four minutes to, to move people into that space and to then the soul would show up for the clearing work that we would do. But I tell you, um, that did not happen in these sessions. Everything stayed dark. It was very interesting. Um, I couldn't see a thing except for a faint little, aspect of them um and the weekend was all about stepping into ourselves as master creator and holy smokes that is what ended up happening in the sessions and i've done several sessions this past week i just did one this morning too um and basically it takes a little bit longer so now they're like 20 25 minute sessions but 
it's all about stepping into the master creator you and so what we do is we step out of our current creation that is everything in this third density reality um, we step out of that current creation we step into that master creator self and we start to amass more light and wisdom bringing in everything the soul is and then as you simply move into your creation or your creation moves into you it does all the work you as that master creator it does all the clearing work i mean this is so flipping profound um and it's something that i haven't been able to you know i'm still working on this because i would love to be able to just put this out there do a meditation with you guys to do this but right now it's still guiding and seeing certain things that are not being released that we have to put our extra focus and attention onto for just a moment so that it releases anyway still figuring out this whole master creator um meditation it is something that i've offered now on online um you know i've had my stuff online for sessions um there's not very many days or many hour windows that you can book sessions because I'm not the one to stay on track and time. <laughs> so I keep myself focused for um, three or four days of the week and in a certain time frame that we can that we offer these sessions. But anyway, it's under the distance healing on Twisted Sage. Uh, let's see. Jumping over here to chat to say good morning. All right. Hey, we got some new folks on and some of our wonderful, wonderful regulars that come on. And hello from Southern California. Hey, Samson, Colorado. Grand rise to you. Uh, hey, Marsha. Happy 11-11 from North Carolina. And Christine from the land of Oz. Hey there. Um in south africa well thank you for joining us uh bjorn you're from boulder colorado awesome welcome and terry in sunny florida thanks for joining us today so um again if you're here live uh please do feel free to jump over here on the chat side and then please do put your questions on the questions tab if you're watching on youtube after the fact you are welcome to sign up for our live webinars uh, basically you sign up for the newsletter list which is on twistedsage.com just go to the bottom you'll find the newsletter sign up and there we send you out um you know a notification when we do these webinars and that has the registration link there so Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oh, Nancy, I need to come visit in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Oh, my goodness. Love to be there. Um, so let's see. Um, gosh, another announcement. Let's see. One more quick announcement. And this is also a request from everybody. If you know of a store, a physical store, that would like to carry our cell phone tabs, we actually have a real barcode on them now um we've done all these biofeedback studies we just paid for this huge biofeedback study this last last spring um from a from a reputable company in california and so now we can say that our cell phone tabs we can legally claim that they are mitigating the harmful effects of cell phone radiations so what all the different biofeedback study are showing is is that your phone with a cell tab on it is more beneficial to you than not having a phone at all that's because we harmonize we harmonize discordant fields so your phone may be a discordant field and your body is this beautiful flowing electromagnetic field and if you are not standing in your power and your light um alignment grounded connected your field can be easily moved. Well, some people not so easily, but a lot of people can be easily moved by discordant energies, including EMFs. So that's really where we see the, the issue of electromagnetic sensitivities coming in is for those who just get pushed around easily. That's why the tensor tools, when you wear any of our tools, 
it is helping to bolster your field. It's helping you come more fully in, grounded, connected, aligned to where your electromagnetic field becomes a transformer of all other fields. I always tell everybody, I don't need all these tabs. We have our cell phone tab. We have the electrical clearing disks for your household electric. We have the alchemist tab for working with computers and any time that you are doing um, any kind of composing, whether it's music, letters, emails, phone calls, whatever it is, the energetics of that, that higher energetics, the energy of the heart is coming through everything that you compose and it does it automatically. You can have the intention. Again, all these tools are simply training wheels and space holders. We can do all of this without the tools, um, which is what we try to teach as well. That's what part of that meditation of these rings is about. But anyway, um, the cell phone tabs are pretty spectacular. And um, so we were looking for anybody who knows of a brick and mortar place, a physical store that may want to carry cell phone tabs. We make these so that they stand up. You can put a hole in them to hang them. We actually have a box that comes in a box of 12 of these. That's for a display box. So if you know of a place that maybe that may want to or would be beneficial for them to carry our cell tab, please do write to us at info at twistedsage.com. Um, again, info at twistedsage.com and just simply send us a, a name and, and basic location. We can Google it and look it up from there. Um, but yeah, we really like to see these out into the world. Um, anyway, phenomenal, phenomenal tools and our new packaging. Uh, we spent a lot of time getting these packaged. Okay. Anyway, we're going to move on from here. So, um, we'll do this meditation here in a few, but let's do this quick sacred space of the heart meditation. Uh, this is something that we do with three breaths, the Trinity breath of moving the consciousness from the head into the heart where we are grounded, connected, and our light comes in more, our consciousness, our soul. So here on 50 Questions Friday, we create this beautiful sacred space between all of us, especially when we move into the heart space. Within this beautiful sacred space, it is each of our souls, each of our light that holds space for one another. It's not like that human and this human and another human come in and do energy work with you. Nothing like that. This is a safe, sacred space to where everything is in a higher vibration to where that reminders comes in that those different potentials and possibilities of, of healing, of clearing, of release work, of just being in more of who you are in your light, standing in your power. This is all the space that is held when we gather here. So thank all of you beautiful masters who do gather with us every week, holding the space for all who will watch this video or here now. So here we go, sacred space of the heart. Simply closing your eyes, putting your attention to the physical heart, imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth, with that heart of the earth, and breathing in that supporting energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. <sighs> connecting heart to heart to source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. Breathing in that light, that healing, loving support into the heart. And that light is always there. It's always in the heart. We simply expand it and bring our awareness to it. The third breath is breathing in the energy of both creation and earth at the same time. Expanding that light within the heart and you become grounded, connected and in the heart space. All right. So opening the physical eyes and looking around, and you may note that the world seems different from the heart space. All right. We are going to jump over here to some questions. But first, let's see. Um, we do have one question over here on the 
chat tab. Let me grab that one first. And this is from Angelo. Um, I have a question. What is the best product for 5G protection for personal and home use? So what the traditional best product for 5G is the TensorField Golden Fire Generator. Um, this, this tensor field generator in the golden fire is one that we are seeing is working for even the 5G millimeter wave. Um, I actually went to Chicago right after the 5G was released there. Um, I think it was in 2018 and did some work, did some studies, did some feeling into what that 5G millimeter wave is like, which is a very limited technology, but they still call everything 5G. Um, you know, and even your routers that they call 5G, it's just a fifth generation. They are of a more potent energy. But the tensor field generators in the Golden Fire, we have a two and a half inch, which is our most economical one. That's one that you simply set it and it covers a two and a half mile area. Now, if you have other things that are within your physical field, so that tensor field generator covers everything free floating through the air. For the entire neighborhood um, check out our testimonials um, you'll hear a lot of people talking about how it shifts neighborhoods um, with these tensor field generators so if there is something that's within your immediate field like you are sitting here right beside your router or you have your phone with you you know and you have that in your field that tensor field generator doesn't have as much of an opportunity to affect what traverses through the air. So that's why we suggest having a, a cell phone tab on your cell phone if you, if you have issues with your cell phone. Also, um, we also have Wi-Fi rings, which are a more economical ring. It's just a little two-inch ring that can slip right over your Wi-Fi router if you are within close proximity. But usually the Golden Fire tensor field generators are the one we suggest because that covers that larger area. And as long as you're not sitting directly beside your router, things like that, that are producing this energy, it's perfectly fine. If your router is across the room from you, then basically it covers, it clears, it harmonizes that field before it has a chance to get to you. The other thing you can do is wear any of the pendants. So from the Golden Fire to the Alchemist to the Wisdom, anything from the golden fire and beyond the alchemist the wisdom the new energy well, those particular pendants or jewelry bracelets clasps rings you carry in your pocket anything that you keep on your field is going to bolster your field how we talked about how electromagnetic sensitivity you're kind of knocked off kilter a little bit in your beautiful electromagnetic field that's just harmonious and beautiful doesn't it, it gets affected more you become more wobbly so these tools as we call them dependence and such that you carry on your person keeps you grounded connected and your field strong and harmonious so then you become a transformer a transmuter of all those energies and then you don't have to worry about them but if you do begin to worry about them, that's a whole nother subject altogether that a lot of people can override with fear or belief systems on what these tools are doing with fields. That's, that's, it's a free will choice. But just knowing in your heart and in your head that when your field is aligned, grounded, and flowing, it is a powerful transformer of all outside energies. And these tools simply just help that. All right. Um, well, hello from Baja, Mexico. Glad you're here. Um, what is the best product for fatigue issues after COVID? Um, you know, just any of the pendants, basically, for anything that that's going on in your body, your physical body. Um, you know, I won't get into the beautiful transformations. Well, okay, well, the beautiful transformations that are occurring on our physical bodies, with our physical bodies in this time, due to whether it is energetics or a virus that comes in to help restructure the DNA in a beneficial way, um, 
whatever it is that that causes you some kind of dif- discomfort, whether it's the fatigue, the sleepiness, whatever, um, you know, what we suggest is a lot of water, be easy with yourself and just allow your body and your light to do the transformations. And of course, the more that you do the meditations, such as doing the Trinity breath and what we're going to be doing here in a few minutes, um, these different meditations, as well as wearing any of the tools and having them in your field is basically going to help to harmonize everything. You, there's so many different ways that we can harmonize these energies and transformations that we're going through because we are in a very special time as humanity on this planet right now. Um, we are stepping through into so much newness. Um, I'm not better to stop there. Also go on chatting all day about this. Um, and again, if you, I'm going to answer a couple more questions here on the chat side, and then please do drop your questions on the question side. Cause I probably won't come back to chat after this. Um, let's see. Uh, black Friday specialist. Yeah, pretty much, uh, our black Friday we do store wide. Uh, what is the best product for harmonizing any metals or any microtech? Um, so, you know, that's it is, is, um, metals like when people have, um, implants in their body and basically that specific metal is not in the same frequency and vibration as you. So imagination, visualization, intention, after you go into the sacred space, the heart, of course, going into the heart space. And, you know, especially if you do some of the meditations that we have out there, like the sacred heart activation and bringing in your golden fire, your golden light. Um, However you do this, it's just visualization, imagination, intention of raising the frequency and vibration of that metal within the body. And of course, you can totally use, oh my, I don't have a wisdom wand here. I have my silver wisdom wand that I'm never without. Usually I have a wisdom wand in my wrist or my pocket or laying around there everywhere. The wisdom wands, especially the full size one is my favorite. The brass and copper one is one of the most powerful tools that we can use to transform stuff, especially if you're not into being, you know, if you don't feel like you are empowered or powerful enough to change the frequency and vibration of things in the physical world, which we are but these tools help get you there. So the wisdom wand is one that I suggest almost everybody on the planet to have. Well, not almost everybody, everybody on the planet to have, because basically as you use these wands, you run energy with these wands and it is, it's shifting the vibration of whatever it is. Um, It brings in the consciousness more. So like crystals, uh, crystals have a consciousness there is a consciousness about metal as well. It is a crystalline structure. We can raise the frequency and vibration of it, not only physically, but it is bringing in more of its light, let's say. It's raising the frequency and vibration of it. So using the wisdom wands on any, the metals, the microtech, whatever it is that you are wishing to change the vibration of, the wisdom wands are the way to go. Um, Really a beautiful, beautiful tool. All right, so we're gonna jump over here to the questions tab. Hey, Renard, been using the grounding ring under my mattress and never slept so good. Oh, glad to hear that I saw you ordered that ring, Renard, and I've been really curious of your feedback on that grounding ring. Um, ordered the new energy ring. Can I place it over the grounding ring under my mattress too? Yes, you know, with the grounding ring and the new energy ring, which these two are, um, they can be stacked. It doesn't matter one on top of the other. It does not matter. You can even do this whole Vesica Pisces with them, and it's going to be expand. You know, it's going to be making a larger field. Um, so they work together very well, and yeah, I would totally suggest dropping them both under the mattress. What I do with mine is actually, I, I love sleeping in the column of energy. So I'll hang that new energy one right above my head so that um, it's on the wall right above my head on my bed. So that way I'm sleeping within the column. And I've managed to try to affix the grounding one down at my feet. And it does not need to be like that. That's just a visual that I love of 
the grounding at the foot and the new energy at the head, the wisdom, new energy. It, it does not need to be like that. You can place both of these above the head of the bed. And I usually like to suggest putting above the head of the bed because these rings do create a column of energy. And so when you place it under the bed, that's still perfect because no matter where it is intersecting your energy field that it's working throughout your entire field. Um, so it does not matter if you place these under the bed or at the head of the bed. I just always like sleeping in the column is all. Um, and one more question regarding the Bosnian pyramid dimensions. I can't find them anywhere, but definitely love the energy of the sun pyramid vibe picks. Do you know them? Um, no. So I, gosh, I did a lot of research on the Bosnian pyramids there for a little while and I don't even know of any good sources or where to find all the information. I know that there is several different pyramids in that pyramid complex and that the main largest pyramid is actually a five-sided pyramid. And there's only two sides of that that have the angle of 60 degrees. Because as you know, all of our ascension pyramids and our little pyramids, we have all angled this angle at 60 degrees based on those two angles of the five-sided pyramid of the Bosnian pyramids. To me, the 60 degree angle is simply more about consciousness versus the, the pyramids in Giza, which have the specific angle like 42 or 54, whatever it is, which I feel is more about physical density reality. Um, so I really do not have a good source on where to find more information about the Bosnian pyramids and the, the pyramid of the sun. Yep, that's that's the large one there. Um, and I'm trying to remember if there's any of the meditations that we do that take you on that journey. I know it's a place where my sister takes people once in a while, and I do too, when there is something that we're having a hard time clearing. Um, we'll do a meditation to go and lay on that stone slab created by that ancient builder race and these light beings with all the crystals infused into that stone slab. And we lay there and beautiful shifts happen. This is the Bosnian pyramid. Um, the Bosnian pyramid is known for all kinds of beautiful, wonderful transformations and healings that occur that people that go there, you know, I have a good friend, um, well, a friend in one of the groups that I'm with, he's, He's in his 70s, I believe, and he goes to the Bosnian pyramid and helps to excavate and carries five-gallon buckets of dirt all day. And he says he feels like he's 20 years old after the end of working all day within those pyramids. So something very special about him. Um, uh, Bjorn, what properties of copper allows it to produce a toroidal field when twisted to certain dimensions? So the tensor ring, so what the properties of copper or of silver is, is that it is a crystal structure. When copper wire is created, it aligns all the crystal structure in a one-way flow called the piezoelectric energy. We take that um, one-way flow, we fold the wire in half, we twist it, and then we cut it. We then have a counter rotating flow of piezoelectric energy. But you cut this at a random length and without intention, it is just still a piece of copper wire. It may have some flow in it, but it is not producing a tensor field, which is a counter rotating vortex of harmonizing energy. So, what makes a tensor ring function is not only that counter rotating field, the piezoelectric but cut to the hundred thousands of a centimeter, very specific measurements. And there are, there have been many cubit measures known to man, but very few cubit measures exist, which will create a working tensor field. There's a lot of people out there who create tensor rings and make claims of, of, of certain cubit measures. You can make anything with intention and it carries a field for you and those who you tell the intention to. In our workshops, we'll actually take a paper clip. We'll muscle test our phone. We'll take a paper clip. We'll infuse the the intent. We'll infuse love and gratitude into our paper clip. We put that on our phone with the intention that it harmonizes the field of the phone. Then we muscle test, and we are strong. 
So that paperclip, and then we hand it to somebody else in the group and they can get the same results because their intention is there. You drop that paperclip on the ground, somebody picks it up who doesn't know what it is, it's not going to transform the field of their phone because a lot of tools out there are tools of simply intention and we are powerful creators. Now, with a working tensor field, again, it is that very specific measurement that creates this tensor field. Um, and again, what sets our tools apart from all others on this planet, very few, there are a few, very few work with what we call the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of these tools. And it is there where you can find the frequencies and properties and consciousness of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet, as well as all the modalities that we learn along the way. So we make this giant toolbox for the soul. And that etheric template is then connected to all the rings that we create. And so when we have these two rings right here, which the very specific measure of these comes from our 888 series of rings. These actually, the measurement is 1,776 millimeters in length, 1776. This specific measurement is the same on both of these rings, but the etheric template of one is the wisdom energetics, that, that newest, most phenomenal field that we've created based on all other energies that we've created and throughout lifetimes. Then we have the grounding ring, the etheric template of the, the higher dimensional creation of the grounding ring is simply that of working with the earth, the heart of the earth. So the grounding ring connects the heart of the human with the heart of the earth versus the wisdom ring, which is bringing in your soul light, bringing in and holding space for you as the alchemist of all energies to become wisdom. And it also brings in the higher soul potentials. So they're still the same measurement. It is the etheric template, which makes them different. Um, and it's the etheric templates where you find all the magic of these tools. Um, Tara, when you send the radionics plate and you put your intention into the sphere and send to Aunt Martha, does Aunt Martha need to be open to receive? Okay, so we've talked about... Um, this little device right here, pretty phenomenal little tool. And we have, and we're talking about um, using this to broadcast with a tensor field generator to broadcast energy and information to another person. Um, it's, it's kind of along the lines of radionics where radionics, they use um, machines with dials to dial in specific frequencies or specific fields to then broadcast to a person and we would put that person's name or photo or fingernail clipping or whatever it is of the person within the space and broadcast just simply this field, this space and these healing intentions. So we'll get more into this at some point in time. We'll do a video. I still need to, um, you know, do the write up and do some more research for before I, um, release this out into the world about how to utilize this as a broadcaster. But basically any of the tools that we create, we are working with the person on a soul level. So when you work with Aunt Martha and you were sending her energy, whether it is any of these tools or wisdom wand, or you simply set a ring down and you put her picture or, or, um, or whatever of her to represent her. And that's just simply for, a space holder for your attention and intention of working with Aunt Martha. So, um, you know, kind of like a voodoo doll, you know, you put the person in there and you broadcast the energy to them. So the thing about you do not need to have Aunt Martha's permission because it used to be when we did healing work as healers and we worked person to person and we were sending the energy of me to the energy of you and we're running energy mono e mono you always had to have the person's uh, um the person's um permission when we do the work with any of these tensor fields whether you are imagining aunt martha standing here and you are wanding her with a wisdom wand 
we are going soul to soul. When we do healing, true healing work, our soul steps in with their soul. Our souls work together. Your soul holds space. Your soul, the other person's soul, is actually the one, their life, their consciousness, is the one who is doing the healing. So when you are stepping in with Aunt Martha, whether you are wanding or using this disc or however you do it, it is your soul light coming in and reminding it of all of its higher potentials of creation. Aunt Martha's soul is then receiving that reminder of those different potentials of creation, not just this little box where, oh, I have this ailment and you keep yourself confined in this box. Your light comes in and reminds her light that, hey, there are other potentials and possibilities besides being afflicted with something. You can be something greater. And so it is their soul that comes in, reminds them, opens up the box so that they can choose different potentials such as healing. Um, so yeah, you, you don't need to get the permission because it is always their soul, their consciousness, their light that is doing the work. Uh, JR, are the silver finger rings more powerful than using the healing hands rings I wear as bracelets for doing healing work? The bracelet is a little big and clunky. Wow, JR, I'm, yeah, those healing hands bracelets are heavy duty, um, you know, and the original intention with them was to just be able to create that third field. Um, and that brings in that star of who they are, that, that higher potential creator being. Um, the finger rings are, the silver finger rings are that chalice energy. That chalice energy is that crystal clear, pure consciousness light. Um, now truly when you are wearing any of these tools for healing, you don't need to use, wear those healing hands anymore because you know, that energy, you begin to integrate that field, that knowingness of that field in with you. So now that you know that field, you don't need to wear the rings, um, cause they are big and clunky. You can simply connect in and a soft intention of bringing that field through for that person. Now I do love the chalice energy in that silver finger ring because it just holds a clear light and it's a beautiful reminder to us at all times of stepping out of the old duality creation of dark and light and, and soul growth and learning and everything else. The chalice energy is simply there to remind us that there is higher potentials, um, than the ones that we've that we've lived by throughout all these eons of time of soul growth and learning and having experience for wisdom of the soul. So we're stepping into a new time and that's what that chalice energy shows us as we step into this new time to where the experiences that we have and that we create are not about amassing wisdom, consciousness and light and soul growth and learning. They are about us stepping into our wisdom, consciousness and light and becoming those creators that we truly are. Um, and so anyway, I hope that kind of helps with it. Um, but yeah, no, JR really, um, you don't need those healing hands. Um, when you're doing the work now because you know that field and you can access it and bring it through with simply being in the heart space and an intention. Um, Nika, please chat more about the changes and integrations going on for humanity. Well, and you know, I've read between the lines and every one of these answers that I'm giving you too is because we have and in the last answer that I just gave, because we truly have been here for about, you know, to have experiences, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, to allow these to come in as wisdom and light um, as a part of the expansion of creation. So we have creation, it expands, it creates soul. Soul has all these incarnations. And throughout humanity, we were supposed to have an experience, allow it to come in as wisdom, light, and consciousness. But a lot of times we choose to hold on to these things and I am my trauma. 
I am my belief structure that I carry through lifetimes. And I am, you know, everything that my experience tells me I am. And so that was the old paradigm. That is where we have been for eons. And we are stepping into a new time to where we simply allow the release of all of those structures, traumas, beliefs, everything into wisdom, light, and consciousness. And we step up and beyond and out of the old limited potentials that we chose from to create all this experience. And we step into our higher potentials, which your soul carries. And we begin to choose new potentials. That's creation. And that's creating from a higher potential versus where we've always been for soul growth and learning. So that is where we are at as humanity right now. Um, and it's looking beautiful. It can be tough for a lot of people. But that's why we also make the tools and share the meditations and information is so that it is not as tough for people to go through this stuff. Um, Bjorn, if you were to start from nothing, how would you start a tensor business now knowing what you now know? Hmm. That's a tough one. There's a lot of people who try to create businesses with the tensor fields. Um, Yeah, I would say you got to do the work first, the internal. Out of the first 50 rings that I made, and I was littered with entities, I did not know about consciousness, sacred space, the heart. I did not know a thing. I was a mundane human. First 50 rings I made, there were some that were creating a non-beneficial field, some that didn't work at all, some that only made a beneficial field out of one side way that we create right now is reflection of where my level of consciousness is. So where my level of consciousness was at before, and I have spent 13 years since I started making tensor rings, working at this daily, releasing, clearing, stepping up in consciousness, stepping up in understanding, stepping out of all the old crap and rabbit holes and all the old stuff and doing this through lifetimes so really to create the most beneficial tools whatever they are it is a reflection of your consciousness so you have to do the work first before you start making tools you can still make tools you can still make you know there's still a lot of people out there that are making beneficial fields but these fields they're in their harmonizing fields um you know, so I would say before you start making tools to be able to have discernment, to know whether something is a functioning field, whether it is beneficial or not. That can be through dowsing, through asking, through having another around you. I could not be here if it was not for my sister Brenda. My sister Brenda is the one who has kept me on track and in alignment and moving forward. Otherwise, I... Yeah, I would not be here making these tools, holding these fields, and doing what I do if I did not have the assistance of my sister, who is one of the only beings that I know on the planet who is so in her heart. Um, well, there might be others. Dalai Lama. Huh? She is so in her heart. I'm sure there's others, especially now. So in her heart that she does not get taken down rabbit holes of belief like humans are hardwired to do to make up shit based on old perceptions which weren't real anyway because perceptions were above reality and things that occurred were based on their own programs beliefs emotions and traumas and so it is my you know it's the wisdom of my sister in the space that she holds that i have been able to step into that higher alignment with these tools so you know anybody starting to make tensor rings it's really about doing the work for yourself first before you step in and make rings for others um uh, let's see next question i ordered the healing hands it's amazing i haven't had dreams for a long time i decided to sleep with my healing hand and started dreaming so much 
That's beautiful. I'm very happy to hear that because, um, yeah, it's that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Another question. There is a doctor on Telegram who studied the bioweapon cove jab, which contains nanotechnology that self-replicate eh, eh, when activated by frequencies. So this is one of those rabbit holes. I tell you what, there are a trillion different realities. Each one is true and valid. So the rabbit hole belief creation within this box that there's all this stuff that everything is outside of us and that we are at the whim of them and them and oh it's you know it's the whatever whoever is a reality box it is a very limited creation and it is creation based on fear so you know i yeah i've 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 been a master angelic warrior and for lifetimes and eons and in the past 10 years up until a couple years ago have been that spiritual warrior of fighting the dark as the light which was a part of the old paradigm of creation light versus dark we're no longer in light versus dark we're letting that creation go so the creation of the nanotechnology and of other outside forces trying to suppress humanity is based in an old creation. Yes, that stuff was true at one time. I could tell you stories and stories. And as a matter of fact, you can go to um, on our twistedsage.com YouTube. There is a, uh, a full day lecture that I that I recorded, which I talk about clearing old grid systems, clearing old energies and um co-creations between humanity and others for us being that limited being we're no longer that limited being um and sorry i i i, my apologies i'll go back to the question from the heart so the question is about tensor tools and using them to clear these structures of belief and reality that no longer serve us, such as somebody is out there trying to influence us and do us harm because everything is your energy and you are a creator. But what I would suggest to clear this reality box field of the nanotechnology and of the jab and everything else is the wisdom wand. Using the wisdom wand, it is clearing realities. The wisdom field is clearing structures of belief. It is, you know, and again, I'm not saying that none of this is not true. Everything is very true and valid. Every reality, every perception is true and valid, but it depends on if it is in a box of limitations or if it is outside of the box of unlimited potentials of creation, because that is where we're stepping is outside of the boxes of unlimited potentials of creation. So how do you get out of this box of that confining of the fear and everything else and being at the whim of everything, the wisdom tools? are excellent for that so a wisdom wand even the little one and a half inch wisdom ring pendant um and again my apologies i'm not hmm, i just have because i've been there holy crap if i've been a warrior of light through eons that was that's been the past two and a half years of releasing my identity as the warrior and that has been tough. And that is actually what we built a lot of the Twisted Sage tools on is fighting the dark, clearing all of those old contracts between humanity and those other outside, outside energies that would limit humanity. But that was a co-creation that we agreed upon in the old soul growth and learning paradigm. We're no longer in that paradigm. We're trying to step everybody out of that into unlimited potential creation um anyway i <laughs> i'll stop there but 
the wisdom wand is an excellent one. So actually, even like when um, when my daughter, if if she needs a um, like a booster shot for penicillin or um, not penicillin for um, you know for for whatever, as I'm not one that's in a medical model, but I s still allow her to get some things, um, you know, based on her her mom's family side who's into the medical model. So basically, when I take her to the doctor and I allow that that one booster shot or whatever not not for covid but for um tetanus i take my wisdom wand and i run energy into that shot and of course all the doctors know by now that in our little local clinic that hey <laughs> let him do what he does and and they allow that no matter where you go they allow you to run energy into that particular thing so i use my wisdom wand i run energy into that and then I also run energy into my daughter. And then basically I'm just using that field to clear anything that no longer serves her and to harmonize it to her body. So anything that we have within us, whether it's it's a shot or nanotechnology or or whatever it is, or the COVID jab, it is about going in and harmonizing that and asking our body and the soul to harmonize what it is that came into our field because we are powerful alchemists harmonizers um we truly are um let's see alfredo can you go in deeper detail the new coil with the wisdom wand with the wisdom ring around it i feel it's super intense packed of energy and emanating glow yes um gosh this particular device here was created by our friends at Kelly Research Technologies. They make radionics machines. This is simply, um, it's a bipolar coil and it creates a field, a counter rotating field. And it's just an energy pump is all this is. It's just an energy mover that works in a certain subtle energy realm. Now the wisdom ring that we created that went around this is very specifically for, for, for this. And basically it takes that, um, because the tensor rings work throughout all of these other subtle energy and etheric levels and layers. So it's working together within this denser, let's say, of the subtle energies, the ones that are closer to physical reality, as well as all the etheric. So it is, it's, it's, a, it's a full spectrum that this is working in. But this is basically this golden shower of light, this golden fountain that has all these little packets of information. They look like little multicolored speckles within this field. And the person who's using it, it is bringing in those higher potentials. That's what those little packets and speckles of information are, are higher potentials of creation. And again, when we are having limited potentials of creation, that is the box. That is everything in this limited world as humans that we've been able to choose from for creation, for soul growth and learning was all this dense stuff, all this crap that we've done with our soul families throughout eons of time. Now we are opening the box into more unlimited potentials of creation. That's, that's everything. That's, that's beyond our imaginings. That's all the, the healing, the, 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 the everything, the, the actually living life and joy and abundance, all of that in limit, unlimited potential creation. So that is what this is bringing through is more of those potentials. When you use it with water or what I usually talk about is using it with like um, an essential oil, like let's say frankincense, one of my favorites. So frankincense basically has a, a potentials within its abilities to, to do this specific work, whether it's with your skin, whatever. So frankincense has this, this band with the potentials that it can do. When you put the frankincense on here, it opens up the potentials of what it can bring through for you. And and that's the same if you were just working with a person. It is holding a field of higher potentials that come through. We'll actually end up doing a webinar on this particular tool um, and go into a lot more detail about it as well. Um, how was the radionics convention? It was good. Um, yeah, I do a annual, I'm invited to an annual radionics convention here. Um, and for me, it's all about trying to get people into their heart when they do their dowsing and when they do their broadcasts. Um, 
and just giving people another way to perceive than out of fear, necessity, and survival of doing the work. Because most people that do the energy work, and especially in radionics, which is very mental, it's all through fear, necessity, and survival. The reason you do the work. And that is in the box of limited potentials. And so I really try to go in every year and open that box a little bit more so that people can begin to do the work and to create for the sake of creating in higher potentials. Um, so that's some of the rings that we made uh, this year are for radionics to, to help bring through higher potentials in the broadcast. Uh, JR, can you order the 23 inch grounding ring on its own? Um, oh yes, so basically these are under the practitioner's rings. The practitioner's rings has the 23 inch wisdom slash new energy, and it also has the 23 inch grounding ring. And then we have the one product page that has these two together as a set for a discounted price. Can you make a three ring vesica with the grounding wisdom rings, two wisdom or grounding rings plus one over the other? You know, yes, totally. So we do have that one set that's called the alchemist halo, which is three interlocked rings to create that third vesica Pisces. And so if you're using the grounding ring and the wisdom ring, um, I'd almost say a golden fire is a great one to add into the mix. And then you put that one at the base to create another Vesca Pisces through there. And again, when you are bringing any of these rings and you're creating a Vesca Pisces with these, you are then melding the field so that they are bringing through something that is greater than just the wisdom and greater than just the grounding, that it is bringing through a higher potential field. And so adding like a golden fire or even another one of these rings, but I would switch it up and add in another energetic. Again, the golden fire is a great one and it's a larger ring. Um, so you can totally just play, play with the tools and do what it is that you're drawn to because you can do no harm with um, inner stacking, interlaying, um, bringing more tools to, to the table. Um, Bjorn, what would you recommend to someone looking to get started? How do we access the ethereal toolbox? So the etheric templates that we create um, are something that I have created through lifetimes. Um, I was, when I first started making the tools about five years when I end to making the tools, this group of beings called, came in actually when we began to make Untalk the key, the onk of the now time is when this group of beings came in and started calling me a master builder. And I was like, well, yeah, I can weld and I'm an artist and I can make circles. And, and it's like, no, it's because of the higher dimensional creations. And so it's basically been a remembrance over this time of creating these higher dimensional tools through lifetimes. Um, and so what I do for, we have on our, we have a website called sacredmeasures.com where we give some of the, the, the older measurements like the standard Chiwa Chupacan unit and some of the older measurements, the 333, all in the galactic are all on that page. And there's a couple of videos, older videos. One of them talks about the etheric templates too, but it's not about how to make them. It is a how to access ours. So basically we give tool builders the opportunity to come in and when they're, when they're making their rings to go into the heart space and ask our guardian of the etheric templates, Heimdall, to allow that energy to come into the tools. And so, you know, like I say, these etheric templates is something my sister and I add to all the time, which then updates the tools. And it is something that I've worked on for lifetimes. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I would say utilize our templates. And a great place to start is doing the STU, which is the harmony ring and bringing in that balance and harmony template. Um, and once you start working with that, that is really a phenomenal one to work with. Um, do it yourself, Taurus. What's the best, what is this product best for? So any of the Tauruses, um, now the, the Taurus, I don't have a Taurus here. The Taurus is the two seed of life's ratcheted. So it's creates that 12 petals, um, or with an outer larger ring. And we have, we have different size Tauruses. 
So the Taurus is, and it's the tube Taurus, not the bull Taurus, the tube Taurus. So these Tauruses, um, we've seen there's a, there was a cancer treatment facility in Golden, Colorado for a while who actually used these in their, in part of their process because basically it brings a harmonious field to wherever you set that Taurus on in the body. But it is also that field is clearing the mental and emotional fields. Um, so the Taurus, most of us use the Taurus for, you know, we'll sleep with the Taurus. We'll sleep with it. Um, the cosmic sun disc, which is a Taurus, is one that we use in all of our ascension pyramids. That particular energetic is one that I always tell people when I slept with that one above my head, I felt like I sprained my pineal because the next day it was just, it felt like it grew and it was sore and everything else. Um, so the, the, the Taurus is all carry a little bit of a different energy, but that flow, that field is the same, just like the electromagnetics of our heart is that beautiful, harmonious toroidal field. So most of us will use the Taurus on the physical body. Um, so if we have an ache or pain or ailment, We'll place it there. Um, so the do-it-yourself Taurus is the is the alchemist Taurus, just like our big 13-inch one, which again, the alchemist sets and the wisdom sets um, are the ones that are allowing your higher light, your soul to come in and start to transform your experiences, your traumas, your pains, your sufferings into wisdom and light and consciousness. So that do-it-yourself Taurus is simply one for anybody who likes to do the wire twisting and the wire wrapping that wants to sit down and do the meditation and create their own Taurus that they ask their soul to work with them and attune to them specifically. Um, so that do-it-yourself Taurus, after you've created it, it is simply something, uh, these Tauruses also like to spin. So a lot of people will take their Taurus, and there's a lot of us who do this, and they'll get like one of those cheap spinners from Amazon, whether it's your little $7 battery powered one that you put D batteries in that spins for like a week at a time, or the plug-in style, or the, um, the kind that you sit in the sun, uh, that, re that the rechargeable kind. Um, whatever kind of these little spinners, they're for like disco balls and, and for wind chimes, things like that. Hang that Taurus on that spinner. And as it spins, it moves energy. So then it works great for the environment. Um, you can also place a crystal because you can pull those Tauruses each side of that seed of life apart just a little bit to where you can fit a crystal in there. And that also broadcasts that energy information and consciousness of that crystal out. So the Tauruses, um, you know, they can be used for the environment because they work about the size of a home, um, especially when they're spinning, or they can be just placed on the body and used that way. I usually, you know, I, I like my smaller Taurus, my divine I am Taurus. I'll usually put it in a bag and carry that on my person. Um, uh, Vindi, all these tools harmonize astrological and planetary energetic influences as they are not our energies, right? Or do we need to set an intention? So, yes. Um, okay, I guess yes doesn't really answer that question. So will these tools harmonize planetary energetic influences and astrological influences? Yes, it is also a choice. So you can choose to be what your daily horoscope says. I know there's always beautiful similarities. You know, I followed a lot, you know, I followed some great astrologers throughout this past 13 years. I don't anymore, um, pretty much anymore. Like, um, uh, what is it? Mercury retrograde. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. I do not participate. And that is it, is that we have always been at the whim of a lot of these things through an old choice before we came here, you know? So, so we have an unconscious choice that yes, I'm influenced by the moon, you know, in a certain way, or I'm influenced by my astrological, but you can go into the heart space and choose to no longer be influenced by that. And basically, when you go in the heart space and choose, you are simply telling your soul what it is that you wish and desire. And it is up to your soul whether that is in your highest and best good or not. Um, 
So you can make these choices without worrying of the consequences because it is the soul that does the work after you make the choice. But that's it too, is that we've chose all these limited things in these lower potentials and soul growth and learn for soul growth and learning. And so the soul is happy to provide us with those. But the soul is also happy to say, okay, yeah, if you're choosing something different, if you just say, no, I choose to no longer allow those to have such influence on me, that right there is going to start doing the work. And then the tools also can hold the space for that. Um, but again, the tools will not override your choice. That's what I was saying about some of these tools like the tensor field generators that are made for restructuring discordant electromagnetics. If it is still your choice that, oh, that damn cell phone tower is frying me, whether you are in fear or you're just, you're making the choice that electromagnetics bad, I'm affected by electromagnetics. And that is your belief and your choice and you stick to it bringing this into your house isn't going to help. You have to be soft and allow this to do that. And the allowing is simply not making that rigid choice of, oh, EMF bad. They mess me up. They, they knock me off my rocker. That's part of what we do this Merkava activation for too, you guys. If you ever order anything from us, you get this card. And this Merkaba activation is simply something that you do to make that choice that, hey, I am this powerful electromagnetic being, and I have this field that harmonizes and transforms all electromagnetics that come into my field. And that's part of programming the Merkaba, as you'll do on any of the videos. And actually, there's one called the 5D Animator Attunement and Activation, I believe it's called. Um, that one is an excellent one. That's where you walk through with one of these chambers that we have here and you do the Merkaba activation. But any of the Merkaba activations that we do, there's several of them out there um, that we've that we've done throughout the years. You go through and you set your intentions in there, which is simply making the choice. I choose that those EMFs are transformed when they come into my field. Um, and so that's kind of the intention. It's, it's a choice when you asked about that particular astrological and planetary. Uh, Linda, I sleep within the 26th regeneration ring. What benefit would it give me to hang the full size wisdom wand with it? Oh, that feels really good. So the regeneration ring to me, it was almost, gosh, the regeneration ring is almost a little harsh anymore to me. And hanging a wisdom wand within there is excellent because basically you can shift the energetics of the tools. This is a regeneration ring right here. And you bring the wisdom energetics into it and it changes it. it, it, it they work together. That field is a co-creative field between these two. And it usually brings something greater than the sum. So if you have your regeneration ring, your 26 inch, and you hang your wisdom wand in it, it is going to be, they amplify each other and it brings through that energetics of the wisdom wand. And to me, that feels like a really good combination. It really does. Um, so yeah, I would highly suggest again, playing with the tools and adding parts and pieces together, especially in that case. I think that's great, Linda. Um, Tara, do I need the radionics plate or can I simply put a photo of Aunt Martha into my divine I am sphere and send it to her? Oh, yes, totally. If So you don't need the radionics plate in the sphere. Um, a tensor field generator will broadcast. In a tensor field generator, the beautiful thing about it is, is that you can simply put your intention into this because of the geometry. And you can simply take your tensor field generator and you can put the photo of Aunt Martha in there, or you can just say, send all these beneficial energies to Aunt Martha. And because, and do it from the heart, not out of fear, necessity, survival, do it from the heart. And this will do the work because of the geometry, it holds that intention. So that's all you have to do is take your divine I am generator, go into the heart space and just ask that this energy is sent to Aunt Martha and it will do so in the highest and best. 
because again, it will be working with her soul. It'll be you, your intention, and this field holding space. And anytime anybody is within any of these tensor fields that we create, it is always their soul again that's doing the work. We're just holding that space of higher potentials. Angela, why the two and a half inch golden fire generator cheaper than other sizes? Um, so all of our tools are based on time energy materials. So the two and a half inch golden fire generator is the one that we suggest for most because it is takes us the less amount of time and materials to create um, versus the one that's the four inch that is almost that's over twice the price because that one takes us a lot longer it's a lot more meticulous to round and to create so everything that we create is based on time energy materials everything um, that's how we do our time studies to determine pricing so and to use it for 5g protect, protection just leave this one in the house or outside the house or in the car so basically leave it um, so it's one that you can set in and forget it it can be anywhere in the home outside the home or in the car as long as you're within that two and a half mile area I usually suggest having it in a place within the home that you see it often because again these tools are working innately they're going to do that work of that two and a half mile area and they're doing great thing they're 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 doing all that work of restructuring the electromagnetics dense consciousness all of that that's listed there on the product page but when we put our attention onto these tools so that's why having it in a place where you'll see it often where it reminds you just like in feng shui or any other thing that any physical objects that you have in order for them to exist, it takes your attention, it takes your, your energy, your attention onto them to keep them in existence. Same concept. Okay, now let me give you a different concept. These disks produce an 18 inch high field, this golden, this golden fountain. When I can see it and I put my attention onto it, it expands. It expands to like 36 inches this golden this golden field that is because of my attention onto it so when you put your golden fire generator let's say in your home in a place that you see a lot your altar your kitchen table your mantle wherever when your attention goes on to there you are expanding the field and you are making it more potent as well because you are a powerful, powerful creator. And when you put your attention and, you know, when you see this and it brings a smile and a knowingness and like, oh, I'm transforming this for myself and my neighbors and, and you know, and life is good. We're, we're doing great things here. Those are all positive reinforcements and attention that you are putting onto this sphere and you are making that field greater and more potent. And so if it's on the dash of your car, that is also a great place. I usually have all kinds of tools in my car. I have a activator as a hood ornament because whenever my attention goes there, it expands the field and it brings through more of more of those beneficial energies and the beautiful thing is, is if you look at this and you're having a really bad day you're having just a shit day and you're like oh man life sucks and you look at this you're not broadcasting that these only broadcast everything that is in these higher potentials and these higher fields is is what these broadcast basically if you look at that and you're having that bad day it's transforming those energies as you look at that and place those in there. So having the field, having the tools in your awareness is a beautiful way to have them. Is there a project product page that discuss how to best use each product? So most of our product pages um, there, except for the past two years, as I've been going through my transformations, transitions, I have not been doing product videos, but a lot of our products have product videos as well as very lengthy descriptions of, of the products and ideas of how to use them. Um, so there's a lot of product videos out there and 
otherwise, yeah, just go to the product pages can give you some great inspirations and ideas. And to look at the testimonials on those specific products, so you go to the products product page for like the Golden Fire TensorField Generator, look through the testimonials. That gives a lot of inspiration on how people are using them and the results that they have. Can we get grounded being barefoot on hardwood floors? Yes. As a matter of fact, we're going to do this meditation here soon. Holy crap, we've gone over time, but we'll, we'll keep going. We still need to do this meditation. The grounding is the Trinity breath. Earth, sky, that is the grounding. That's the Trinity breath. So you can ground anywhere. You can ground in an airplane. Um, if you have two golden fire generators, how do they work together? Basically, anytime you bring any tools within within their within their same field, they are amplifying their potency, their power and potency. Not power is not the right word. Potency and how you like feel them. It amplifies it by like twenty three percent. So the more tools you bring into a space, just the more potent the field is. Is there a difference? in energy between the heavy gauge wisdom ring you're pairing with the grounding ring and the lighter gauge 26 inch wisdom practitioner ring. Okay. So we had, um, and we no longer make or carry those, but we had a 26 inch, uh, practitioner ring that was in the wisdom ring. And basically this 23 inch wisdom ring and that 26 inch wisdom ring carry the exact same field. The difference is this heavier gauge, it's what I would call more potent. In potent, I mean that it is felt on the physical. So when you have a heavier gauge and a lighter gauge ring, it doesn't matter the twist, a heavier gauge and a lighter gauge ring, the heavier gauge is usually, if they're the same energetics, they'll be produced in the same field, but the heavier one is just perceived more on the physical. So that's what I mean by potent is just simply perceived more on the physical. So the practitioner rings, I really like, we, we were actually making some lighter gauge, eight gauge, this particular gauge here in large practitioner rings, but I felt it was disservice. We no longer carry those because you don't feel it as much on the physical. It's not as potent. And again, that's part of working with the human is the mind, body, spirit. So a lot of times we have to get the mind on board because if the mind is in fear and survival, a lot of times it's not, you know, it's not allowing. So when the mind feels and the body feels, oh, when the body feels this ring, it convinces the mind that there's something going on. Then the mind allows the body is always on board. Um, when are the Taurus pendants coming back in stock? Uh, we're working on Taurus pendants right now. We had to get new bales made um, because we actually have a local jeweler company who makes the bales for us. So um, when they come through, then we'll start having more of those Taurus pendants um, in stock. All right, you guys. So I'm going to jump back here to chat really quick. And thank you for moving your questions over onto the questions tab very much. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so we'll be done with the questions now and we'll move into this meditation. So again, we did this meditation. I did one last night um, that I put out on this product page, but we'll go through and just do a meditation here as well. So again, closing your eyes, go into the physical heart and imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth. Within the earth is this crystal sun. It is the heart of Gaia. As we take in that deep breath, as we connect heart to heart to that crystal sun within Gaia, and we breathe in that light and that energy, I feel and see it as this electric blue, white light, maybe even a little golden color, however you see and feel it, but it is a tangible energy. So as we connect heart to heart with earth and we breathe in and we draw up that loving, 
supportive energy of earth. Just feel it envelop your physical body from toe to head. Just this tangible, beautiful hug from the earth, hugging every cell, bringing that golden white blue electric light in between every cell into your field. Now Gaia, Earth, is a powerful being in co-creative support of the human. She asks that you release the energies that no longer serve you, those dense pockets of emotions that you carry. Whatever it is, all is energy. All this energy that you've accumulated and that you carry Make a choice to let go of it. It no longer serves you. Choose to release all that no longer serves you and allow the earth to just draw it out, to just siphon it out. And she is a powerful, powerful transformer. And she just transforms that energy for you, alchemizes it. Just allowing that all the flow to the earth. Now, next, we're going to connect you to that space we see within those healing hands rings. It is this giant star, this giant sun, a central sun in creation. And this central sun is you, you as creator God. A larger facet of your soul. So you as creator, this giant light in all of creation, and all creation is yours. All you do is allow that light of you, that light of you as creator, to be present within your heart in the here and now human. So taking in that deep breath, Breathing in that light as you, as that giant sun, as creator. That beautiful, brilliant light that is you transforms any of those energies that you still hold and turns them into something new, new energy, which is there to serve you. All you do is allow your light, your light as creator to come in and start shifting all energy. So together, the earth is holding that space for the release and you as that beautiful, brilliant light of creation is there holding that space and together they are both clearing energy and they're transforming energy into something that serves you as we step forward into new creation. This new energy supports that. So keep taking in those breaths breathing in more of your light because all of this energy that is being alchemized is turned into your light, your wisdom, your energy of new creation. Allow your light to come in and allow your light to serve you as the master creator that you are. Allowing your light to shift all of creation, all through time, all the old programs, beliefs, traumas, emotions, all the stuck energies from throughout all lifetime. It's just brought into this field, 
with Gaia, with you as creator, and with you as the human. And all is transformed into light and wisdom. All right. So utilize the space as anything comes up. This simple three breath technique of breathing in the earth tangibly, of breathing in and expanding your light as creator tangibly. The third breath of bringing them both into this here now you human master creator as you're anchored onto this planet into the here now. This is so powerful. You begin to shift all of creation. You are such a powerful, powerful being. All right, until next time, keep playing. We'll see you then. May unlimited joy be yours. And may you step in as master creator and allow abundance, health, wealth, and joy. <laughs>